I want to talk a bit about a sticking that I've talked a lot about already, but I want to cover it here as well. This is a sticking that was shown to me by Johnny Vodakovic, so I refer to it as the Johnny V sticking. And what it is is right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left. Johnny showed it to me as applied to the stair drum and how you can get different accents out of it and get all kinds of different things just on the stair drum. Then you can start moving it around the drums and get a lot of different ideas around the drums as well. What I've come to realize lately is that the Johnny Vodakovich sticking or the Johnny V sticking is the same thing as George Lawrence Stone's stick control number 33, but it's just started in a different place. So here I've written out number 33, and if you look at it as one knee and uh, two e and uh, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left. If you start it on the and of one and loop it back around, it's the same thing as the Johnny Vodakovich sticking. Started in a different place. Here's the Johnny V, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left. And here's 33. Right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left. So also looking at the Johnny Vodakovich sticking and starting it on the and of two, it would become number 33 in George Lawrence Stone stick control. So if you look at right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, as one E and a, two E and a, if you start it on the and of two, it then becomes right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left. Again, the same thing as each other, just started in a different place. So now let's play this sticking. I'm gonna play it slow in between the hi-hat and the snare. The right foot is gonna follow the right hand so that it'll be spelling out the mambo bass drum pattern. So let's check this out at a slow tempo. Now I'm going to move it up in tempo, I'm going to put both hands on the snare, and I'm going to get several different types of grooves all on the snare just by accenting the right hand differently in spots, and then accenting the left hand differently in spots. The whole time this will be the same sticking, I'm just accenting it differently, and I'm adding some buzzes here and there, but trust me, the whole time It'll be the same sticking unless I mess up. So now I'll take each one of these and play them a little slower and I'll show you how we can get a mambo type of New Orleans second line groove and accent on the one e and a two and three and a four. Ba. And what I'm doing there is what Johnny would call the lazy left hand, where I'm just allowing the left hand to buzz on the head. And then occasionally, I'm also buzzing the right. But here are the hands played separately. But added together, they come up with a very nice legato, organic, breathing type of thing that's happening on the snare drum, and it makes for a nice legato sound, especially when you start playing with the different areas of the snare drum.
So to start playing in different areas of the snare drum, you might want to just get in the habit of sweeping things. So instead of playing it all in the center like this, which if the snare is too tight and too muffled, it's going to sound terrible. So then I'll take the muffling off the drum and you don't want to hit the iPhone because you don't want to have to buy a new one, but I've only hit this five or six times. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've never hit it yet. So don't hit the iPhone if you're going to use it as your muffling. But what you want to do is you want to get the muffling off the drum. You don't want the drum to be too choked and you also want to back up on the snare wires. So I'm going from what I had was this and then too much muffling, and it just sounds terrible. So you wanna back off the snares, get a nice raspy sound, and then start sweeping. So you can start sweeping with the right hand, as opposed to playing it all, and then too tight, it's just terrible. If you got the snares too tight. So, sweep with the right hand, and let the left hand do the lazy left hand. You can start to accent the left hand as well. And what you'll do is you can get the traditional New Orleans second line accents by accenting the left hand for two beats and then accenting the right hand for two beats. Then if you accent the left and the right on each and, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, then you can get a really nice train beat. That train beat might be a little bit busy and you might have to modify that a little bit. So you could play one and three, or it'd be one and two, three, four, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, on the bass drum. And you can maybe choke up on the snares a little bit and get a more concise, not quite as organic train beat, but I'm playing the same sticking and I'm getting much more simple, straightforward train beat. I found that it's great to practice this sticking, especially when first learning to Hey Pocky Way by the meters. Zigaboo plays the groove all right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, and you get something that sounds like this. So you notice I muffled the drum a little bit because on the record, Zig's got a little bit more of a dry sound on the snare. But if you want to, you can open this up a little bit and then you could start to play some of the Johnny Vodakovich stickings and you can accent them as you would for Hey Pocky Way. And this is a great way to start practicing this sticking.
now we've explored some of the possibilities of this sticking just on the snare drum, and we haven't even gotten to the rest of the kit yet. So one of the things that I found fascinating was that Johnny would take this and he would put it on the cymbal with the right hand and move it from cross stick to the rest of the drums and come up with some, something that sounded like a different beat altogether, but he was playing the same sticking, but just giving different applications to it. When Johnny showed me that, I was like, great, that's awesome. Now I finally have something that I can play on Caravan. And, you know, I'd show up at these jam sessions and guys are trying to be hipper than everybody else. And I was showing up, this was someone I was 17, 18 years old, and a trumpet player would be like, you know, Caravan, B flat, uh, 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 uh. And before I could figure out, well, do I want to play this on the bass drum? Or do I want to play this on the bass drum? They had already started the tune, and I'm still trying to figure out well, which exercise from which book do I want to put on top of that, and I was just left in the dust. So with this, I was like, oh great, I can finally play something on Caravan. That is not technically challenging to play, but very musical. Wah, Same sticking right here. And then you're safe for eight bars, or at least until the next A section. So I found this to be really useful that I could take one idea. And this is where I came up with the, the idea of taking one idea and applying it in a lot of different ways. And I've tried to apply that to a lot of different ideas. So what you can do is start turning the snares off, start coming up with different things. You come up with stuff for St. Thomas. So then I took that and I went home and practiced it for two or three decades literally, and I'm still coming up with new stuff. And I went home and maybe put up some pots and pans and frying pans and all these different things and hit on different things and was amazed at all the different, all the different variations I could come up with sonically and texturally just by moving the hands around. So I didn't realize it at the time, but it was almost like an organic MIDI type of thing where you have the same type of pattern going on, but you're just changing out the sounds. So you could do this on the drums, and I didn't think of it this way at the time, but now I've started to realize that it's kind of like that. And you can change out the tones and come up with different sounding things while you're still playing the same basic idea. So just to experiment with some things, I put up a Pete Englehart lens drum, and it gets some really interesting sounds, and I might pick up the tambourine in a minute. I'm just going to experiment and see what I can come up with trying to push myself to come up with new ideas.
that's just some of the things that we can come up with, and we haven't even gotten too far into it. But experiment on your own and put up different things and come up with different ideas and see what you can do to create some things that might even surprise yourself. One of my favorite things to do as of late is to take this sticking and David Garibaldi eyes it, put the Swiss triplets into it. So again, Swiss triplets being this, taking the regular right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, and adding flams to it. If we take and do this to this sticking, some really interesting things start to happen. So I'll take this sticking, put the flams in to make the Swiss triplets. Then I'll move the right hand to the floor tom and the left hand to the cowbell and we'll see what happens. So if you notice what happens when we do that is that the right hand is spelling out something that's very similar to what the bass drummers play. Geechee and other bass drummers will play this right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, the Johnny V sticking. They'll play it on a bass drum turn on its side and they'll play it with a mallet in the right hand and a backwards mallet in the left and they'll play this sticking and is what they get. Now by putting the David Garibaldiization on it and adding the Swiss triplets, the left hand now starts to spell out a rhythm that is almost exactly the Sinkio or the Mardi Gras Indian rhythm. So the rhythm that the left hand starts to spell out is this. So that is one note different than the Sinkio or the Mardi Gras Indian rhythm. So now if I put a tambourine or, or a jingle stick or a tambourine in the right hand and play this over here, then we really start to get some interesting ideas. So when you stop and think about it, everything that I've talked about with the right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left sticking and the right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left sticking, the number 33 and the Johnny V, this whole time talking about those two stickings, we've been talking basically about the same idea. It's just that the two are started in a different place. So basically all these things that we've talked about on those two stickings, we're still talking about one idea turned into a lot of different things. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button as well as the notification bell so you can be notified when I post future lessons and videos here on my YouTube channel. I would love to have you come check out StantonMoreDrumAcademy.com. I have over 20 hours of video lessons there as well as over 300 pages of written lessons as well. I would love to have you join and become part of the SMDA community. Thank you all for checking us out. See you down the line.